You're watching The Business of Law, brought to you by Bloomberg Law and the ABA Journal. I'm Lee Pacquia. On this program, as many of you know, we often talk about the difficulties facing the legal profession today. It's not easy out there. But today, we wanted to take a look at what it takes to build a firm in today's environment. Joining me now, we have Bruce Barquette, founding partner at Barquette Marion. Welcome, sir. Thanks for stopping by today. Thanks for having me. So let's do a little background before we kick off. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Connecticut, went to law school in Connecticut, and moved down to the metropolitan area in 1986 to work for Dennis Dillon as an assistant district attorney out in Nassau County. Right, and then you had a career in, in criminal practice uh, for many years, and now today you're starting a firm. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Sure. About two years ago, I put together a firm with three other individuals, uh, Steve Epstein, uh, Amy Marion, and Kevin Kieron. We all had books of business and specialties. Uh, in specific parts of criminal or civil litigation. And we got together to form a firm, and it's been so far so good. We've been, in the last couple of years, we've grown. We now have seven lawyers, and we're going to add a few more, including a managing partner, the, probably at the end of the year, that's going to be a retired judge. So you have a new managing partner coming into the firm you're hiring. Um, this is not a common story in a post-2008 world, especially in law. What's it like building a practice today, or a law firm today, that is? Well, the, the, the practice has existed because everybody had their practice uh, prior to the firm joining. What we were trying to do is bring together some resources with diverse practice groups within inside a, an area or a field. So we have criminal litigation, a lot of white-collar criminal litigation, and some civil rights work. Mm -hmm. And each of the individuals came together to uh, basically to get the support they need to operate in today's litigation environment. The days of carrying a briefcase into a courtroom and pulling out a legal pad and cross-examining witnesses are long gone. What seems to be the simplest case when it goes to trial has boxes of material, you have CDs, all kinds of electronic data and investigative data that comes from cell phones, social media sites and so forth. To be able to do that you need a team of people to gather the information, analyze the information and then ultimately present it in a way that jurors expect it to be presented and it's not voice. You need mm. visuals. Mm. We don't talk about criminal law much on this show. How has the practice fared since 2008? Some people say there's always crime, so maybe it's impervious to the other uh, aspects of downturn we've seen elsewhere in the legal profession? Well, there are, there's always crime, but you can't make a living off of, uh, you know, somebody hitting an uh, old woman on the head with a bar and taking her pocketbook. Uh, the types of litigation that we're involved in are, are fairly sophisticated. You need um, individuals with resources that can pay. And frankly, you need real disputes. So you have to have the government attacking either a business or an individual or prosecuting them, and you need an individual with a defensible position and resources to defend themselves. So we represent uh, professionals, doctors, lawyers, business people who feel that the government is unfairly targeting them either for an investigation or for prosecution. And of course, we still represent individuals charged with uh, traditional crimes like homicide but those individuals have to have the resources to defend themselves. Mm. So when looking to build out uh, other practice areas that complement or, or work well uh, with the criminal practice in a larger context of a firm, what practice areas kind of fit when you're looking at the building pieces to put them all together? Well, well and my, my vision of this was that we needed the core group of, of attorneys who could do criminal defense work. We wanted to do, and we've established a vehicular crimes unit because individuals with resources do get arrested for DWI and they can't afford to just plead guilty and have their license taken for six months. Along with that vehicular crimes are car accident cases where there are criminal charges that are filed. In addition to that, we need appellate litigation. We hired somebody from a local prosecutor's office who is a superstar in appellate practice. And the civil rights litigation, if the individuals are ultimately exonerated, we want to be able to sue the government to recoup their lost legal fees or to be compensated for the time they spent in prison or jail if they spent any time in prison. Mm. You once said in a New York Times piece that defending indigent murderers is your stock in trade. Um, you do an awful lot of work and not all of it is paid. How do you strike the balance between law firm management and practice? Well, ultimately we try and do what's, what's right for the client. So I've represented um, a number of individuals for free. And I've been lucky to be involved with these cases. Uh, one of the individuals is Marty Tankliff, who was accused and convicted of killing his parents in 1990. I joined a team of lawyers in 2002, began an investigation, and in 2008 we walked him out of prison and he was exonerated. Marty's in uh, law school now. He's a paralegal with our firm. We expect him to graduate next year and be, join our team as a lawyer. 
Hmm. Uh, I, I got involved in that because I thought it was the right thing to do. We haven't been paid at all, never were paid for the case, and spent literally thousands of hours. The rewards were significant. Fortunately, we still made a living during the time that we were representing him. And ultimately, it, it was just something you couldn't turn your back on. I and mean, there's other individuals that I've represented over the years. Uh, my wife jokes that um, somebody called that for me to help with a case, and my wife asked, how much are you going to get paid? I said, I think it's for free. And she says, oh, a person's as good as out of jail. You always win those. Hmm. And it's, um, I don't know how the balance is, stri uh, how you strike the balance, but I, I do enjoy the work. And ultimately, I guess God's been good to me. We've been lucky enough to represent these individuals and still pay our bills. That said, how do you compete with larger firms? Well, we, we try and have a, an area that where we are not in a position to compete with somebody where there are you know two million pages of documents and litigation that's going to go on for 10 years where somebody's billing out of the million dollars a month but if so we don't represent generally speaking large corporations what we do do is represent individuals so if an individual comes to us they guaranteed they know who's going to be working in their case they know that they're going to get the personal attention of a partner and that they know that our uh, law firm has the in some ways the best of both worlds. You get the individual attention of a partner, but you have the firm to back them up and the team to be able to support them. Mm. Um, there's a lot going on in your practice and business uh, in these days, but that said, what keeps you up at night? I'm sure a lot, but primarily... My kids these what's days. What's the top risk? <laughs> little kids. So the, <laughs> my one-year-old is the, the biggest offender in that, in that sense. But in terms of the practice of law, uh, I'm, I'm lucky. I mean, not a lot. Ultimately, I worry about my cases and my clients. But if you were, I found that if I work hard, do everything I can do, by the time I put my head in the pillow at the end of the night, and sometimes the end of the night is pretty late, I'm tired enough and have done enough work so that I sleep through the evenings. What we worry about in terms of the law firm is what everybody worries about. You worry about growth, managing the growth, making sure you have the resources in place to meet the needs of the clients as they come, but you don't want so many resources that you're waiting at the, at the kind of the door of the restaurant for people to come in to serve them. You want to be able to have the, the need be met with the resources. So those things have to go together. And striking that balance is, is tough. And frankly, adding the staff. We've added three lawyers since we started about 18 months ago. We're going to probably add another three lawyers in the next six months. And every time we do it, the office administrator looks at me and says, where are you going to get the money to add another three lawyers? Because it doesn't seem to be there. But it's anticipating that growth that's going to come in and matching, as I said, the need with the resources. Yeah, it sounds like a careful balancing act. Bruce Barquette, I want to thank you for your time today, sir. This was thank really you. interesting. Appreciate it. That's Bruce Barquette, founding partner of Barquette Marion. If you'd like to learn more about the issues we just discussed, be sure to go check out our offerings on BloombergLaw.com and also on the Bloomberg Terminal. You can see more of our videos on YouTube, and you can follow our updates, of course, on Twitter. I'm Lee Pacquia. Thanks for watching.